Okay, in terms of fire protection, um, just a, a couple of other points before uh, for suppression and before we go on to uh, detection and other issues. Um, the uh, Again, the, the different classes, um, there are, are reasons for them. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, water, everybody thinks of water uh, because, generally speaking, we've been you know, dealing with wood fires for hundreds of years. And water works very well on wood. But it doesn't work too well on oil. Uh, you spray water on oil and the water just falls through the oil and the oil floats on top and burns. Um, so, you know, it has to be the appropriate stuff. Um, the appropriate stuff, as I say, you know, the, the white dry chemical is, is the one you're going to run into most often. Um, that is, uh, suitable for, uh, like the three major classes of fires, the, uh, uh, wooden paper, uh, oil and gas, and, and electrical. Um, so, you know, those ABC uh, extinguishers are the, are the ones you're going to see most often. Now, in terms of the gas discharge, I mean, there's, there's CO2, um, which um, it definitely works, um, basically displaces the, the oxygen. Now, um, then there's halon. Um, now, since it's been sort of banned, um, I mean, it was banned, but you could still refill systems. So if people had halon systems, uh, they were allowed to refill them. Um, but, you know, this is uh, growing uh, less and less um, prevalent. Uh, you're not having many cases where um, people had halon systems and are, are still refilling them. You know, as uh, different um, machine environments are, are built and renovated and, and uh, destroyed, um, the, uh, you know, they're being replaced with, with newer gas discharge systems. Um, if you have a halon system, by the way, uh, you do need to refill it with halon. It, it, if you um, don't, and, and I mean, you know, these days it's it's sort of like you can only use recycled halon from existing systems. But anyways, if you um, try and refill a halon system with another gas discharge material, um, it doesn't... It doesn't work. All the valving has to be replaced if you're going to do that. Um, now, uh, halon was uh, uh, not just oxygen displacement like carbon dioxide was. It had um, an additional property, a very interesting chemical property, that um, at high temperature, the halon itself, the molecule, would break down and would... Um, pick up oxygen from the air. And so it would actually, there would be a chemical reaction going on of um, the halon picking up oxygen, not just displacing it, but removing any remaining oxygen. And then when that, those breakdown products cooled down, they would release the oxygen and reform the, the halon. So very interesting uh, chemical reaction as, as part of the fire suppression process. Um, anyways, so we need to detect a fire so that we can put it out, can suppress it. So we have to have detection systems. Um, so we've got, um, uh, well, we've got sensors. Um, and of course we have all kinds of sensors. Uh, I mean, to begin with, there's the manual pull box that, uh, you know, uh, you see a fire, you pull the, the lever, the handle, whatever it is, you know, break glass, um, uh, you know, just 
having a person able to report and, and set off the fire alarm so everybody can get out of the building, which I may remind you is the point of the whole exercise. That is what we need to do uh, most. That is the priority, getting everybody out, getting everybody safe. Um, so there are uh, optical systems that look for, for example, smoke, smoke particles in the air. Sometimes they're just uh, looking for um, the fact that there is smoke and, and a light is not as bright. Um, sometimes they're looking actually for or at particles. And, and, you know, how many particles are there in the air? How large are the particles, etc. Um, then there's temperature. Now, sometimes you trigger at a fixed temperature. The temperature gets to 500 degrees, there's a fire. Sometimes you have systems that will look at the rate of rise of temperature. You know, if it's going up one degree per minute, okay, maybe that is somebody turning up the thermostat. If it's going up 50 degrees per minute, uh, probably something is wrong. Um, different uh, sensors there. Um, ionization detectors. Uh, because the uh, combustion, the, the uh, gases and, and particles in the air um, that result from combustion will change the characteristics of the air in terms of ionization. So uh, that's another detector. And uh, of course, in, in any of these, the location of the sensors is important. You don't put a, uh, a temperature sensor over a heating element. Um, you don't put an ionization detector in a welding shop. Um, you don't, uh, you know, different things that, you know, it's, it's just contraindicated. Um, and, and which is the best type of sensor? Well, all of them, really. Um, you know, you can have uh, multiple sensors and, and then, uh, you know, a system which, which pulls all of them and, and sees if they are agreeing that, you know, there is a fire going on. Uh, again, um, we, we come back to uh, compartmentalization. Um, so, uh, we have compartmented systems such as uh, machine rooms and, and, you know, do we have specific fire protections? Um, interestingly, if you have a gas discharge uh, fire suppression system, your machine room, you probably have the walls actually hinged from the top because when those gas discharge systems go off, if there isn't a way for the air and gases to escape, uh, they will escape anyways, and, and you'll have walls blown up. So um, having hinged walls is, is a good idea. Um, there's also aspects of the fire safe. Um, now, uh, fire safes originally were just intended for paper. And of course, nowadays we've got um, uh, magnetic media, floppy disks. Well, I suppose, you know, floppy disks are kind of old hat now. Uh, but we do have tapes, things like that, uh, in some situations which we're having to protect. And they need a much better protection than the, uh, than the paper. Uh, the floppy disks and the tapes are going to degrade from the temperature a lot sooner than paper is going to start charring. So, uh, uh, some, well, most fire safes these days will have uh, dual ratings on them. They will tell you what uh, type of material will be protected and for how long. So, you know, make sure that you're buying the appropriate type of fire safe in those situations. Uh, yeah.